Hey everybody, welcome to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, learningtomix.com, and here on my YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take a live recording, a recording that was done, a live performance, it's maybe over an hour and a half or an hour long, and uh, chop up that recording into a separate song so you can mix each song separately. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, hit that subscribe button below. It helps me out tremendously. Also go out to facebook.com slash homerecordingmadeeasy and follow me there. And for more tips, tricks, concepts, and training around all aspects of home recording, mixing, and mastering, be sure to go back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Check out the Quick Mix series and the Made Easy series. They'll absolutely help you make better mixes and masters in your home studio. And if you want to dive down deep into the craft of mixing and join a like-minded uh, community of audio engineers and home recording musicians, check out what I have going on over at learningtomix.com. We have a 30-day money-back guaranteed. It's a mixing membership website that, uh, that you'll just really love. Trust me, go over there, check it out. There's all kinds of videos, all kinds of content. You'll really love it, learningtomix.com. So now let's head on over into Studio One. And I get this question, <clears throat> excuse me, every so often, um, and it's a valid question. And the question really is, okay, I have a live recording. I went out and I recorded my band live on location. And as you can see by this session here, this session is about an hour and 40 minutes long. And the question is, um, when I mix this, do I mix it all as one big long song um, with the same plugins and everything on the entire session? Um, or do I chop it up into uh, separate songs? And if so, how do I do that so I can mix, mix each song as its own separate entity? What, what, which is the better way to do it? That's the first part of the question. And the answer to that is it can go either way. Um, if you're just doing something where you have this live performance and you just want something that's going to uh, sound good for demo purposes or you just want something to use as like a, uh, a reference for you and let's say your bandmates to listen back to to see how you guys are progressing as a band and you don't plan to release it commercially or you don't plan to, to use that recording necessarily to go out and get other uh, 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 gigs and uh, jobs and you just want something that sounds decent, you want something that you can maybe share in your inner circle, um, I would say you can mix it as one long song. You can use the same plugin, same processing on every single song throughout your entire set. No big deal. You would process just as normal. <clears throat> the problem is when you go to export each one of those songs, um, so you can have separate audio files. Let's say you did a 15 song set and you want to uh, mix the whole thing as one big session and then you want to export um, each song in your set as a separate audio file. You have to use your start and end flags to set the beginning and end points of where you want the song um, to, to be. So for example, let me show you that quickly. So let's say the first song started here at zero and it ended, let's say at uh, three minutes here. And let's say that was the end of the first song. You would set your start flag and your end flag. You don't have to slice up the session. If this was the pause at three minutes between the first and second song, for example, you can set your start marker or flag or end marker, and you would just go to export mix down. And in the dialog box here in Studio One, um, you want to check out the export range area where you can uh, you have a couple of different uh, selections here. You want to choose between start and end marker. That will just mix down as a separate audio file where you have the start flag in the end flag, I call them flags, they call them markers, okay? Uh, in other DAWs, it's very, very similar. In, I believe, uh, Cubase, you you actually highlight the whole section from start to finish. Uh, in Pro Tools, it's done a different way as well, but that is the basic gist. You want a start point and an end point, and then when you go to mix down, you choose that selection and you don't have to worry about anything else. And then that will give you um, a separate audio two track mix down between your start and end flags. Okay, so that's one way to do it. The other part of the question is, well, um, why would you want to um, maybe cut up each song into separate entities and then bring them into a separate session so you can mix that as its own separate thing? Um, and and if, if you're going to... Um, Use this. Use your your mixes and your and your product here for maybe more of a commercial release or something that you're going to post on your website or something where uh, you're you're going to take it outside of the inner circle, if you will, and you're going to share it around. Um, I always recommend it's better to mix each song separately in its own separate sessions with its own separate processing, and the reason for that could be a few. Um, you're not always going to have the same, uh, you know, necessarily EQ settings um, and even volume uh, settings on your faders from song to song. And you may say, well, what do you mean? 
Well, you'll have some basic settings. Maybe your drum kit throughout the whole set will have the same kind of uh, same kind of EQ, maybe compression settings. But let's say you have multiple singers in the band, and in one song you have you know one singer is the lead vocal, so their fader is going to be up uh, higher than the other background vocals. And in song number two, you may have a different dynamic on the way who's singing the song, so your fader moves are going to change. You may have in one song where you have a guitar solo where that's obviously going to be uh, pushed up a little bit more in the mix, but maybe in the other song, it's more of a, a horn solo or a keyboard solo. So those faders might change from song to song. Uh, you may also have, depending on how the, the thing was recorded, how the session was recorded, you might have some different EQ moves on certain songs on certain instrumentation. So I guess the bottom line is that you have obviously more control when you have them as separate songs and separate sessions. Not to mention it cuts way down uh, on the file size. And when you can treat things separately, you're dealing with a much smaller session. You're dealing with um, you know a much smaller file size, and there's just a bit more control. And that is the preferred way, in my opinion. That's what I like to do uh, more times than not. It is very very rare that I would take an hour and 40 minute set, throw all the plugins on it, set it for the first or second song, and just let it ride throughout the whole song. I probably would never do that again, unless it was like recording a band rehearsal or something like that, where you're going to just use it as kind of a reference tool and you're not really looking to, uh, to share it with the world. So if that were the case, you said, well, how do you do that? How do I get this 140, 100 and, um, excuse me, hour and 40 minute set broken down into into songs, separate songs. Well, it's quite simple. So here we are in our session here. So we're gonna use our start in our uh, end flags again, as we said. Um, and what we're gonna do this time around is we're gonna go ahead and we have our first song here. And what we're looking for, if we zoom out a little bit, is we're looking for, or zoom in, we're looking for um, the end of our first track. And usually you can see that when you uh, increase the size of the waveforms here and you increase the audio waveforms here and you make it so it's, at its, at its brightest so you can see it. You can usually see between the songs where the song ends and where there's like a break before the next song begins. So for example, um, you'll have a, a session here where you have your, your first song. Okay, we'll, we'll zoom out here in our start point. And this looks like this is like about a seven minute. And I, and I do a lot of listening. You know, you can usually visually see where the song ends, but you also want to double check and listen. Right around the seven minute mark, this is kind of an instrumental warm up type of a thing. And there's the end of our first song. Okay, so the very first thing I do is I'm going to go ahead and set my start and end markers. Okay. Let me turn off my grid here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my, uh, I'm going to highlight all the tracks. So this this is a pretty, you know, typical song. We have a, you know, a live band here. We have a drum kit. We have bass, uh, an electric guitar, some keyboards, some horns, and some vocals. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to select everything here in your DAW. We'll, 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 we'll do this a little differently. And you can see all your tracks in all your regions or your audio events are highlighted. Then I'm gonna get out my blade tool, which is number three on my keyboard in Studio One. You can see my little blade. And I'm just gonna cut where I want the song to end. And you can see now it made all the cuts and it separated the audio events. So I'm gonna go back to my arrow here. And now <clears throat> this here is going to be a separate song, okay? This is our first song here, okay? Then what I like to do is I like to for me personally, I just like to highlight the rest of it. And I, let me just zoom in a little here. And I just like to kind of scooch this over and leave a little space between the two songs. You don't have to, I just like to do that. Okay, make sure my start, my end flags are here. Okay, and now I'm gonna export these as stem files. Okay, so let me uh, let me go ahead and zoom uh, out a little bit here. Again, we have our start and our end flags here, okay? And now I'm gonna go to export stems or I have a macro for it, but in Studio One, I believe you go to song and we're gonna go export stems, okay? Now, um, but before we even get to that, let me, let me explain something. So, um, the, you know, you because you set your start and your end flag, you don't necessarily have to cut and slice and dice these things into separate sections because if you export, the stem, just like you export the entire song, it will go, it will, it will export it between your start and end flag. That is true. For me personally, I like to cut them up and I like to see them in different blocks so I can just visually see the songs as separate entities. Because once you get to song two, song three, and you start moving your start and end flags, you, you visually on the screen lose sight of where the first song start and stopped. 
Does that make any sense? Um, so you don't have to do it that way. That's just my recommendation. So once I cut my first song up, cut it out, um, now I wanna make sure, um, before I export the stems, I wanna make sure all my faders are set to zero, okay? I wanna make sure that um, all my pans are in the center. I wanna make sure there's no plugins and effects and there, there isn't any on this song, okay? This is just raw audio. Um, and then before I export, I just wanna play this back a little bit. I wanna take a look at my master fader and see are we, how hot was this thing recorded. Okay, if it's recorded really hot, I may want to take all my faders and lower them a few dB so we're not exporting things that are in the range or could be in danger of clipping. So if I just play this back quickly, take a look at the master fader. We'll go to like the loudest part of the, of the section if we can. So we're running around a negative 10, negative 7 dB, which is pretty good. It's, it's, recorded, uh, it's recorded well. It's recorded conservatively. Now, from song to song, that can change. And that's why I want to cut these things up into separate blocks. And I'll show you that in a minute. So now what I'm going to do is uh, we're running around a negative 7. I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all my tracks here. And again, I'm going to be a little conservative. I'm going to lower this just a couple of dB, 2, 3 dB. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do there. So we're about 2, 3 dB. Okay, now I'm going to go to export stems. Okay, and what I want to do here in the dialog box, we have channels and tracks. Okay, the tra if you uh, you want to choose tracks, not channels. Channels will also include any buses, any effects channels. You just want the raw audio. You're just going to choose tracks. Okay, over here in the location, you're going to pick the location of where you want those stems to be. Um, and I'm just going to put it on my, uh, I'll put it in this folder here. This is uh, by the band, by the way, Fat Hat. This is a 2017 live gig. Fat Hat uh, uh, came from uh, Rick Knopke over at PreSonus. PreSonus um, uh, is, you know, obviously the inventors of Studio One. And Rick uh, Knopke from PreSonus um, is in Fat Hat. And he shared this uh, session with me and allowed me to use it for demonstration and demo purposes. And I want to personally thank Rick for that. So I'm just going to create a new folder here. And I'm just going to call this... If I didn't know the name of the song, I'll just say song one stems. Obviously, if you know the name of the song, that's more helpful. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit open. Now, the file name prefix. Right now, it's it defaults to whatever you called the session. I called the session Fat Hat 2017, Home Recording Made Easy Session. If I leave that the way it is, every single one of our audio files is gonna have this prefix and then have the track name after it, which can get kind of long and kind of, you know, hard and, and, and hard to deal with. Typically, I just delete this. I don't want a prefix. Maybe I would call it song one. It would go song one kick, and then you'd have song one snare top, song one a hi-hat if you wanted. So let me just show you that. So I'll just do uh, S1. So for song one will be the prefix. Um, and then again, I'm going to use it as a WAV file, 24-bit, 48K. You can use do it as MP3. You can do it as a whole bit for a bunch of different types of files. Typically, I'm going to use WAV files. 24-bit, 48 is, is fine. Export range between the song, start and end marker, as we talked about earlier. Okay. And then the options, we're going to preserve the mono tracks, leave that checked. These are all default, and I would just leave them alone. Use real-time processing. You don't need to do that. Write tempo to audio files, whatever the tempo's at, it's gonna write it. Close after export, fine. Hit okay and watch what happens. And depending on the speed of your computer will depend on how long this takes. This could take a few minutes here. So as you can see, it's exporting each one of the tracks. So you can see S1, kick, S1, snare top, S1, hi-hat, S1 was the prefix. So we know this is song one, and here's each one of the individual tracks, and you can see that it's exporting. It looks like it's going to be done in about 40 seconds or so. But again, depending on your computer, this could take four or five minutes, 10 minutes. This can take two minutes. It really all depends on the speed of your computer. But as you can see, um, it's going pretty quickly here. Now, again, it's exporting just between the start and the end markers. So it's only exporting about, what, seven minutes? It says seven minutes and 12 seconds. That's how long the first song was. That's where I set the end flag. Um, so if you had a song that was three minutes, this will export even faster. So let me show you that. So now you can see the folder opens up and here are all of our stems for that song. So you can see we have S1, the audience track, S1, the bass track, S1, Don's vocals, S1, electric guitar, so on and so forth. Now you say, well, now what do you do with that? So what I do with that now is I'll go back to my start page. Um, I'll create a new song. 
okay? And I'm gonna create an empty song, and I'm gonna call this S1. Uh, S, uh, what, what did I call it? S1, uh, whatever, <laughs> S1 uh, song, we'll just call that for now. And you'll say, well, where do you wanna put it? Well, I wanna put it, you know, I wanna put it in the same folder, but you guys can put it anywhere you want. Um, here's our stems right here, S1 song stems, right? There it is. I'm gonna put it right there in the S1 song stems. I'm just gonna hit open, okay? Uh, the sample rate, that's the, sa the sample rate, and then I'm just gonna do an empty song. And now I have an empty session. Now I'm gonna import those stems into that session. Okay, so I'm gonna come up to my uh, files menu here. I'm gonna go to my, uh, my, my hard drive here. Let me just uh, navigate to it. Again, this will be different on your computer anyway. I have uh, quite a few uh, session songs and folders here. So we're looking for the Fat Hat sessions. Here they are. Fat Hat uh, Home Recording Made Easy. And here it is, song, one, stems. Here's all my stems. I'm gonna highlight the first one, hold down my shift key, highlight the last one. Okay, and I'm just gonna left click, drag it into my session, go all the way to the beginning, let go, and it's gonna import all the audio for that song. And now, let me just do a smaller view. Now you have all of the, uh, all of the stems from that song as song number one or whatever the song is, and you can mix this song just like you would any regular song, okay? So it's only a seven minute tune, it's not an hour and 40 minute tune. Does that make sense? So that is how you, uh, you export and import into a new session. And then what I would do from there is I would go to the next song, I would find the start, I'd move my end flag for song number two. I would go to my start point, which is where I made my cuts, okay? I go to my start point and I'll try to find where it ends. Again, you can usually see it. You could just see the audio if it's, you know, where the audio kind of stops is typically where it ends. And it looks like it's somewhere over here. And again, I always listen back and just double check that. But let's say that was the end. Then I'm gonna highlight all my tracks again as we did before. I'm gonna use my blade tool and I'm gonna cut that song right here. And then I'm gonna move it over a little bit. That's something I like to do just to keep some space between them. I can zoom out again. And now my start point is at seven minutes and it ends at about 13 minutes. Again, about another seven minute track tune. I would listen back again and I would check my overall master fader to make sure that I'm not clipping. And if I am, um, I would uh, lower my all my faders a little bit more. Again, to be around a negative 10, negative 12 dB, that's conservative. Um, because now maybe let's say in this song we have vocals that we didn't have in the other song that might be super loud. So you just wanna double check that. You don't wanna export all your stems and have everything clipping, really important. <clears throat> once you do that, once again, go to export stems. If you don't have it as a macro, go up to song files, export stems, pick your tracks. And then once again, you're gonna name this song number two as the prefix. You're gonna choose the location and you're gonna export just like we did the last time. And that is how you take a large live recorded session, like a, a live gig, cut it up into separate songs, export those stem files, and then re-import those into a new session to where you can mix them separately. There are benefits to doing this. It does take a little bit longer. It's more work involved, but you'll have more control over each individual song. Um, and I like to do it that way, although you can just mix it as one long concert if that's what you want it to do. So I hope you found this video helpful. I get asked about this every so often and I wanted to share this video with you. If you like what you saw in this video, please hit that subscribe button below. Also go out to uh, Home Recording Made Easy, go to learningtomix.com, check out all the content we have ongoing over there on my Home Recording Made Easy. Uh, we probably have on the YouTube channel near over 300 videos at this point, tons of training products. A lot of them are free or very low cost to you. Um, and if you have any questions at all, leave a comment. I'd be glad to help you and I will see you in the next video. Take care.